you this morning on the third Sunday after Epiphany. Let's rise and sing our opening hymn, page 363. The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, oh, oh ye angels of God, Fall down and worship before him. Zion heard and was exceeding joyful, and the daughters loved to now The Lord is king, the earth may be glad thereof. Yea, the multitude of the isles may be glad thereof. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All ye angels of God, fall down and worship before him. So Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law 
and the prophets. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities, and in all our dangers and necessities, stretch forth thy right hand to help and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the eighth verse of the 41st chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree and the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Here ended the lesson. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 42, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 42, on page 392 of the prayer book. Like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before thee, presence of God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they daily say unto me, Where is now thy God? Now when I think thereupon, I pour out my heart by myself. For I went with the multitude, and brought them forth into the house of God. In the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among such as keep holy day. Why art thou so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet thank him, which is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is vexed within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan, from Hermon and the little hill. One deep calleth another because of the noise of thy water floods. All thy waves and storms are gone over me. The Lord will make his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night season will I sing of him and will make my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto the God of my strength, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I thus heavily, while the enemy oppresseth me? 
My bones are smitten asunder as with a sword, while mine enemies that trouble me cast me in the teeth. Namely, while they say daily unto me, Where is now thy God? Why art thou so vexed, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? O oh, put thy trust in God, for I will yet thank him, which is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the twelfth chapter of the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, beginning at the 16th verse. Be not wise in your own count conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to see everybody here this morning, and for those of you who are visiting, we bid you welcome, and we're so glad you could join us worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this day. All right, here we are. Today's the last Sunday in Epiphany this year. We're already going to be turning to the Jesima Sundays, getting ready for Lent. It's hard to believe we're doing that. Um, just a couple of announcements I want you to be aware of. On Sunday, February 14th, which is the last Sunday before Lent begins, we are actually going to have a pancake breakfast here in between the services. And so you are encouraged to come out that morning. Our Shrove Tuesday thing kind of has kind of frittered away over the years, and that's okay, that's not a problem, but we thought we would do it on Sunday morning. You know, pancakes, sausages, eggs, you know, it'll be, it'll be great fun. And, and the only thing that you have to do for that day is listen to a presentation on the craft market. So we're going to do like the timeshare people do, you know, they give you an, they give you a weekend at the resort, but you got to listen to a, uh, what is that? A 12 hour spiel or whatever. I promise this, this spiel won't be that long, but anyway, it, you know, it's hard to believe, you know, with everything moving the way it is, we feel pretty confident that the craft market is going to come off this fall. And so, uh, so we need to get started on that and, and get it squared away. Um, tomorrow is uh, the conversion of St. Paul, one of the great uh, prayer book feast days, and so we will have Holy Communion here at 12 noon. Also, our Wednesday night Bible study this week, we are turning to the letter of Jude. That's the one that the Beatles named their song after. <laughs> I'm teasing, but anyway, so anyway, the, um, the letter of Jude, and let's see, one other thing. Oh, yes. Your contribution statements are sitting in the narthex in the box. They should be in alphabetical order unless your fellow parishioners got in there, start throwing envelopes around. So anyway, so pick it up if you can. So, all right, I'd like to offer the blessing of birthdays and anniversaries. Anyone had one in the past week? No? All right, Todd, uh, sermon hymn today is 296.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today, of course, is the day the gospel lesson was the wedding at Cana. And, of course, we know the significance of that particular day. It's as Jesus begins his earthly ministry and begins form, forming miracles. But I want, to th want us to think about um, our Savior himself and his character. Uh, several weeks ago, um, I talked to you about this idea that if, if we just focus in on Jesus being the man of sorrows, which of course he is because of what he did on the cross for us, that makes perfect sense. But we lose an entire understanding about who Christ is. And when we see him, he comes to a wedding feast. He changes water into wine so that the, uh, the host will not be embarrassed. But we also know that Jesus had the kind of personality that attracted, you know, pretty roughneck kind of people. I mean, fishermen, publicans, sinners, all those kind of people were attracted to Jesus. And as I told you then, there is no way in the world that some simple little holy guy sitting there meditating is going to attract these kind of people. He had to be engaging. He had to be a man, really, that is full of joy. And of course, he was perfectly full of joy because he was the only begotten son of the Father. And I think we, if we lose that, that idea that Jesus was actually a man of joy, we lose the fullness of who our Savior is. Uh, many years ago, I read a book called The Man of Joy, and, and if you can get your hands a hold of that, the author does a phenomenal, phenomenal um, explanation of why Jesus is truly, at the heart, a man of joy. I could always see, um, you know, Peter and, and Andrew and that whole crew just sitting with Jesus, you know, just having a good time and, 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 and laughing, enjoying each other's company. And of course, that's what we're all to do also, is to enjoy each other's company. And don't be dour religionists. Don't be sour. Be happy. My wife, years ago, um, put it this way regarding this particular Sunday, that this was not the day that is to be remembered as the day he changed water into wine. She said, this is the day that we need to remember that Jesus kept the party going. <laughs> And that's true if you think about it. At its core, that's exactly what ended up happening. Otherwise, they would send everybody home from the wedding feast because there was no wine. And, and so with that, that, that joyful understanding of the way that we need to live our lives and acknowledge our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I mean, we need to consider the joy that's in our own lives here on this earth. Jesus had a good time with his buddies before all that nonsense started. I, I, please don't 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 tell the bishop, please. Oops, it's on camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I want to tell you something that brings me incredible joy. Okay, something that brings me unceasing joy. <laughs> My pastor are in the NFC championship today and that brings me great joy and so I put on my cheese head I mean it's stupid but it's so much fun it really is in fact my vestments are green and gold today see God figured that one out so that was good so what I do I thought I today I would just you know share some joy with you that knowing that we gather together as Christian people and it's okay to have fun, to have a really good time. So, I'm gonna stick with the Packers theme for a moment. 
Tom Brady. Everybody knows Tom Brady, right? Incredible quarterback. Well, you know what? Tom Brady died. And I know the Dolphins and Bills fans out there are probably, okay, go ahead, Father, keep telling us about this. Well, Tom gets to heaven, and he meets the Lord. He meets Jesus, you know, and Jesus comes up to him and says, Tom, I am so glad you lived a full life. Glad to have you here. And as I told you in, in Scripture, I have prepared a place for you here. And he says, come on, let me show you. And he takes him on through heaven and everything like that, and he gets to this beautiful little craftsman style bungalow pick a fence around it you know it's got got patriots notations you know on the mailbox and on the windows and in fact in one corner tom notices that there's even a tiny little buccaneers banner and and tom is so touched that jesus even thought about the short time that he spent with the tampa bay buccaneers and he's like jesus i'm this is wonderful this is awesome and everything and jesus says yeah i knew Wait, this is your place he says thanks he said jesus says follow me and so they start walking through heaven and there are all sorts of different houses little little tiny little places there's a larger places and so on and so forth and as they come around the corner of one, one of the streets of gold in heaven, all of a sudden he sees this, this incredible building. It's, it's made of green and gold and white marble and everything like that. And there's a 50-foot flagpole out in front of the house. And it's got a big, huge flag on it that has the big green G of Green Bay. And Packer's pennants on all the windows and, you know, little Packer gnomes in the yard. And, and Tom says, Jesus, you know, look. Actually, I'm considered to be the greatest quarterback of all time. I've won so many Super Bowls and everything like that. Don't you think it's just a bit much that you would give Aaron Rodgers this kind of a house compared to me? And Jesus looks at it, takes Tom. Tom, oh, you're so cute. This is Dad's house. <laughs> Another Packer fan was at Lambeau Field. He's up there, he's up in the cheap seat, so to speak, and he's like a typical Packer fan. He's about two or three beers in, doesn't have a shirt on or anything like that, and he spies an empty seat right down in front on the 50-yard line. He says, I'm gonna see if I can snag that. You know, he needed the beer courage in order to be able to do this. So he goes running down there. The, I've been to Lambeau, you don't steal somebody else's seat, just not happening. <laughs> he goes down there and says, sir, um, you know, um, you're, you have an empty seat here, is it possible, you know, it, you know, is somebody coming? And he says, well, yeah, that's my wife's seat. Um, we've never missed a game since the Vince Lombardi era. I mean, diehard fans. But it's empty because my wife died. And the guy's like, oh, okay, oh man, I'm so sorry. Couldn't you have had some family and friends and everything, you know, one of them come with you to sit with you for, you know, to take her place? He says, no, they're all at her funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and now here is Deacon Lynn's favorite joke. Francis, be sure to tell him that I told this one, okay? So there's a, uh, there's a Panthers fan a Falcons fan, a Packers fan, and a Cowboys fan. And what they're doing is they're all together and they're climbing up through the mountains and stuff and everything and, and they're arguing about who loves their team more. And so the Panther fan, I'm going to show them. And so he's the most loyal. He says, go, this is for the Panthers, and jumps off the cliff. And the Falcons fan goes, Oh, well, I'm not going to be outdone by a lousy Panthers fan. And this is for the Falcons, yay! And off the cliff he goes. And the Packers fan, he knows he's the most loyal. So he says, oh my goodness, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to show everybody exactly how loyal I am. And so the Packers fan, he professes his love. He professes his love, in fact, for all of football. He says, this is for everyone! And pushes the Cowboy fan off the cliff. <laughs> Lewis will love that one, yeah. <laughs> the, um, one morning, a fellow finds himself standing at the pearly gates. St. Peter explains, you know, hey, dude, it's not easy to get into this place. You know, we got some criteria that you got to meet before you can come in. Were you a churchgoer? No. Ooh. 
Okay, all right, okay, we, 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 we can still deal with that. Um, were you generous? Did you give your money to the poor and take care of other charities? No. Ooh, this is bad. This is not good. Um, did you do any good deeds, you know, like helping out your neighbor, anything whatsoever? No? Oh, Peter's getting a little worried here. You know, I have to turn away a guy. And then he says, look, look, dude, everybody has at one point in their life done at least one nice thing. Can you not come up with one? And he goes, oh, yeah, well, actually, I did help this lady one time. Um, she came out of a store, and there was this group of hell's angels around her, and they had knocked her down and taken her purse. And, and so I went running over there, threw my bags down, and went over and got her purse back from the guys. And then I called that biggest biker a coward and spat in his face. Peter's like, okay, dude, now we're talking. When did this happen? Guy says, oh, about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> when Lucy's philosophy professor discovered that she was a Christian, he targeted her for debate. And so she more than held her own, so she, she knew what she was doing. But he asked her to explain to him how any book could possibly be taken seriously that claims a man could stay alive in the belly of a great fish for three days. And Lucy answers, well, you know, sir, actually, I, I can't explain it. However, when I get to heaven, I'll, I'll ask Jonah to see how it was accomplished. And the professor says, well, and if Jonah's not in heaven, what are you going to do? She says, well, sir, then I suppose you can ask him yourself. <laughs> this one's one of my favorites. Edith was the church gossip. She spread rumors to groups of parishioners by asking for prayers for so-and-so who were arguing in the store. You know, she was always on the lookout for some kind of news, substantiated or not, juicy or almost juicy. Now, Sam came to the church, brand spanking new. He kept to himself a lot. And so Edith was having a tough time getting any kind of the goods on him. And finally, one Saturday afternoon, she noticed Sam's truck was sitting in front of the town's bar. And she could barely control herself, couldn't hardly sleep that night. She was so thrilled with her discovery. So the next morning, she spreads the word that people should pray for Sam to find the road to recovery, for he had a drinking problem. In fact, she offered Sam prayer as he was seated in the sanctuary, just loud enough so that at least four rows around him heard very clearly of her concerns for his addiction to the bottle. Sam sat there silently and listened to her. Later that night, Sam quietly parked his pickup truck in front of Edith's house and left it there all night. <laughs> Yeah, you had to think about that one for a minute, huh? <laughs> All right. Now, if you're an IRS agent or a lawyer, relax. I'm not talking about you. An elderly priest was dying. He sent for two members of his parish, an IRS agent and a lawyer. When they arrived, they were each asked by the nun that was there to sit in a chair on either side of his bed. The priest gave a faint smile when he knew they were both there, and he settled in for what would be his last night on earth. By the morning, the priest had passed on to his reward. As the two men were preparing to leave, the lawyer asked the nun why they had been called. And, I mean, after all, they had not really been particularly close friends of the priest. And the nun said, oh, I suppose it'd be all right to tell you right now, Father said that he wanted to be like his Lord and just wanted to die between two thieves. <laughs> yeah, I know that's ooh. <laughs> A preacher's little boy one day inquired him of his deaf father. He said, Daddy, every Sunday when you first come out to preach, you sit on the platform and bow your head. What are you doing? Father explained, I'm asking the Lord to give me a good sermon. The little boy responds back to him, well, when's that going to happen? <laughs> And here, let's bring it back around to the gospel. A minister was driving home one night. Police officer stops him for speeding. 
And the officer smells alcohol on his breath, sees an empty wine bottle on the floor and asks, sir, have you been drinking? The minister replies, just water. The officer says, then why do I smell wine? The minister looks at the bottle, looks at the officer, says, oh, good Lord, he did it again. <laughs> I would encourage you to take joy in your faith life. This is not a sad road that we are on. It's a joyful road we are on. We rejoice in the Lord always, as the scripture says, and again, I say rejoice. But we're on the path with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he has precisely prepared a place for us so that we can walk along the road with him and finally attain unto everlasting life. And that's really the true joy that we have in our lives. And I would encourage you to actually live that. Be joyful in the Lord just like Christ wants us to be. And finally, when we get to heaven, we'll find out just what kind of a stand-up comedian Jesus actually is. Way better than me, that's for sure. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, do we ascribe as his most justly due great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven.
let us pray. Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who continues to make intercession on our behalf in the heavens. Amid your prayers this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place, for Allison, Ann, Barbara, Carolyn, Deacon Lewis, Francis, Norm, Pat, Randy, and Tricia. We also pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those we remember now in our own hearts. We pray for those who are traveling, remembering Allison this week. And in our provincial prayer cycle, we pray for these churches in California, St. Matthew's Church, Newport Beach, St. Mary Magdalene Church, Orange, St. Joseph Parish in San Mateo, and we also pray for St. Luke's Church in Colorado Springs and St. Mary's Church in Denver. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours also may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Walter, our ordinary, and all priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants to part of this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good example, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you ever sins and are love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. By thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, 
If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness into his own glorious light. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, <laughs> glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, and these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. 
and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer to present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we're unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And in thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Isaiah, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving.
Savior Jesus Christ, I believe that thou art truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Since I cannot now receive thee with my lips, I humbly beseech thee to enter spiritually into my heart. I unite myself unto thee, Lord Christ, and embrace thy presence with my whole heart, soul, and mind. Let me never be separated from thee. May the body and the blood of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, celebrated at this altar, fill me with divine strength, preserve me from any evil and danger, and bring me unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now, having received the most precious body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, let us pray together in great thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ is Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And Depart in peace. And you, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
be to God. Hallelujah.